Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. At the recent Thunderbolts Project conference, EU 2015, Paths of Discovery, Professor Donald Scott presented new, groundbreaking evidence of the electromagnetic connection between the Earth and the Sun. The Electric Universe theory states that the Sun is in essence an electrical discharge phenomenon, powered by electric currents flowing along the arm of the galaxy. Electrical circuitry connects the Sun and all planets, including the Earth, driving climate, weather, and Earth's auroras. The telltale sign of Birkeland currents at the poles of planets is counter-rotational motions in atmospheric phenomena. Today, Dr. Scott discusses the new visual evidence that Birkeland currents from the Sun are the cause of Earth's auroras. The Earth-Sun connection, which of course is, I think, the primary basic foundational idea of the electric universe, at least historically, that this uh, marvelous investigator, Norwegian investigator, Christian Berkland, literally put his life in, in danger to go out on the north slopes of Norway in the, in the Norwegian winter and take measurements out there. His idea was, of course, that the aurora were caused electrically. You have to remember that when he did this, this is around 1902, 1903, I think, the idea of an electron had just been postulated two or three years earlier. So it was not a very, what's the word, ubiquitous idea uh, that these electrons were flying around. And uh, he was, that is, Birkeland was roundly chastised by the uh, astronomical community. Now, oh, ha, that's ridiculous. No, none of these um, corpuscles, I guess, uh, Birkeland called them. And also um, other investigators call it, called them corpuscles as well. Uh, but they could never make it to hold 93 million miles from the, from the sun to the earth. It's a ludicrous idea. And of course, later on, to make the long story short, and we, after World War II, when we sent rockets up into the upper atmosphere, we found out indeed that's exactly what, what was going on. And uh, Sidney Chapman, the uh, prime, what should I say, uh, antagonist of, of Birkeland, was certainly shown to be all wet. So from there, it went on. I got into the act very late, just a few years ago. My contribution really was um, I completed the derivation of a mathematical, physical model of the Birkeland current. What would this thing look like? And NASA now calls them magnetic flux ropes. And actually, Hannes Alfian was the guy who coined that phrase. I don't really <laughs> like it very much because... It kind of obfuscates the uh, the idea that it's electrical. All these uh, these folks nowadays, NASA uh, and the professional astronomers, they're okay with the word magnetic. That's fine. They they kind of pull that out of their out of the bottle as like a genie. And oh, if they if there's something they don't understand, was well, oh, it's due to a magnetic field. You hear ludicrous things like, well, there was a lump of magnetic field that caused that. A lump of mag. You've got to be kidding. Well, anyway, they don't still like to use the word electric although they're coming around even on that one. But anyway, um, this model that I, I derived, I finished the derivation of it. it this, the, the derivation was really started by a fellow by the name of Lundquist in 1950. But it was in, in his paper, it was very incomplete. Oh, coefficients were not evaluated, and uh, the structure that the, those equations uh, implied was not discussed. And anyway, the, um, one of the primary properties of that model uh, is this idea of counter-rotation. If you think about a steel rod, then you surround it with a, with a pipe, a hollow pipe, and then surround that pipe with a bigger pipe, and then yet surround that whole thing with a bigger pipe, and keep on doing this for a number of, what should I say, pipes, a <laughs> number of radii, uh, and have each one of those pipes, if you pick up one of the pipes, uh, the, the pipe above it and the pipe below it would be going in the opposite a rotational direction from its rotation. So that's what I mean by counter-rotation. Sort of, if anybody's familiar with counter-rotating propellers on a ship, that's exactly the way the tail shafts would, would work. But anyway, that's, um, that's what my model at least came out with, is that it should be counter-rotation. And most people, like well, anybody who's interested in the electric universe, I think, realizes that uh, I, about one or one and a half conferences ago, I presented a, um, I thought, a mind-blowing video, a NASA video, showing exactly that happening at the North Pole of Saturn. One of the things that kind of bugs me a little bit is that 
uh, astronomers are, are reluctantly um, agreeable to talking about Birkeland currents when it comes to the Earth. Even there, they're trying to call them some, by some different names. I, I read an article the other day. What in the world is this guy talking about? Oh, he's talking about a Birkeland current. He didn't call it that. Uh, I think maybe they are a little bit ashamed of the shabby treatment that Birkeland got from professional astronomers. But anyway, this 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 video from um, from NASA was was just mind blowing. I think, and as, at this past conference, just last week's conference, I was fortunate enough to uh, find another uh, NASA video, this time of the planet Jupiter, the everybody's big brother planet there, and uh, sure enough, just blatantly, there was these counter rotating. Cylindrical. When you look at them, down at them at the North Pole of Jupiter, they're circular, of course, and they were traveling in opposite directions. And I sat there amazed when I first saw the video and uh, actually counted or tried to count the number of these counter-rotating concentric cylinders. And I got up to fifteen before I ran out of steam. And, and it, it's, when you have fifteen different counter-rotating cylinders, I mean that's that's really it's a lot of counter-rotation. And then I thought about, well, you know, what about the Earth? I mean, everybody knows that the Birkeland currents uh, do power the Earth's uh, aurora. Um, is there any evidence of counter-rotation there? So I guess I prowled the, the Internet, and I came upon several people who had, uh, had tried to video the aurora. Most of them uh, didn't know what they were looking for. Mo most everybody who's looked at it says, oh, isn't it beautiful? It's because marvelous. Oh, it's gorgeous. Unlike me, they were not looking necessarily for evidence of counter-rotation of these hollow cylinders. Until I came upon one Polish fellow, I guess at least by uh, ethnicity, his name is, I think, Maciek Wniarsik. And he um, had a fantastically um, uh, high-resolution resol video camera, placed it on a very firm tripod, and the north tip of Scotland... He took these uh, this uh, this video, and I just I just marveled at it. And I, if you ask my opinion, does it show counter rotation? Uh, I would quickly answer you betcha. Especially right at the opening of that video and in the closing scenes, it is uh, it's undeniable in in my opinion. In this singularity, in my one man's opinion, it is obvious that there is counter rotation going on there. There's also evidence, of course, that they uh, they do occur on uh, possibly at least on Neptune and Uranus, uh, not particularly so on Mercury for several reasons. One, the what's required is to have a to have the planet have a reasonable magnetic geomagnetic field like Earth does. Jupiter has one in spades, so that's why I think the, of all the planets, the, uh, the Jupiter is most obviously on the receiving end of a Birkeland current. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to Thunderbolts.info.